Hello, and welcome to the first of three brief recorded modules on the transition to academia, a short series discussing some differences between the clinical and academic world of physical therapy, as well as important topics regarding this transition. My name is Lauren Petterson, and I'm a physical therapist based out of Honolulu, Hawaii, as well as a current PhD and physical therapy student at the University of Central Arkansas. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Student Leadership Development Subcommittee under the American Council of Academic Physical Therapy, otherwise known as ACAP. Today will be the initial video of a three-part mini-series focused on introductory aspects of entering the world of academia, everything from academic standards to how to take the initial steps from clinical practice and begin a transition into the academic world. Today's topics will be an introduction to CAPTI, and let's get started. An important note to mention prior to beginning is that speakers for the entirety of this series are members of the ACAP Student Leadership Development Subcommittee and have no conflicts of interest to disclose. As a disclaimer, data from the Commission on Accreditation in Physical Therapy Education, or CAPTI, is used. CAPTI bears no responsibility for the interpretations presented or conclusions drawn based on the analysis of this data. The thoughts expressed are the personal viewpoints of the speakers involved. The learning objectives today are listed on screen, focused on description of faculty statistics, interpreting CAPTI standards, and differentiating between academic and clinical education with the session also outlined in this order. First and foremost, some of you might be asking, what is CAPTI, right? CAPTI stands for the Commission on Accreditation in Physical Therapy Education and is a critical aspect of the physical therapy education world. In order for a program to be established and for the graduates to be recognized as physical therapists, the program has to be accredited based on certain standards set by CAPTI for both physical therapy and physical therapy assistant programs. These standards are fluid and ensure that the quality of education remains top notch as techniques, literature, and technology progress within our field. Some quick and interesting numbers surrounding physical therapy education. There are currently 264 accredited programs with 60 more in development, resulting in over 34,000 physical therapy students. In addition, there are 379 accredited physical therapy assistant programs with 24 developing, creating an additional 12,000 physical therapy assistant students in the profession. These numbers, which are continuing to trend upward, highlight the importance of qualified and engaged academicians in the field, as well as the success of the profession of physical therapy. So important to mention that being a faculty member does not only include teaching, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> CAPTI Commission also seeks evidence that all responsibilities of the faculty, ranging from teaching to scholarship to service, as seen on the slide, are being met. More to come on that in the following modules regarding faculty responsibilities. Now to focus on the standards that programs must meet for CAPTI accreditation. A significant topic of discussion is the composition of the faculty, as noted here by Standard 4, stating that the program is composed of core faculty as well as assistant faculty, and they must have doctoral preparation. Doctoral preparation includes the doctor of physical therapy, which is now required to be a practicing physical therapist. Um, they also must be employed primarily in the DPT program and have contemporary expertise in their area, as well as effectiveness in teaching and evaluation skills. In addition, as we progress into standard four, 
the program faculty must include at least 50% of the core faculty holding a terminal academic doctoral degree, as highlighted on the screen, such as a PhD or an EDD. CAPTI differentiates between professional and academic doctorates when calculating the percentage of faculty with an academic doctoral degree, requiring that at least 50% of the core faculty hold this higher education academic doctorate. The next slide includes statistics regarding current faculty's held degrees, with just under half sitting at the PhD level. While this doesn't mean by any means that one cannot be nor thrive as a faculty member without an academic doctorate, it's to bring awareness to the standards that must be upheld by physical therapy and physical therapy assistant programs, which guide decision making. It is also important to point out on this slide that the definitions included in professional doctorate in this graph include some degrees which are normally considered under the academic doctorates in conjunction with the Doctor of Philosophy or PhD, which would fall into the 50% for CAPD standards. The final topic of discussion for this module is clinical versus academic education. CAPD holds different standards for these two and separating the requirements for faculty members with clinical instructors and directors of clinical education falling under clinical and academic faculty under, you guessed it, academic. As the slide depicts, clinical education includes clinical education faculty, otherwise known as clinical instructors or CIs, and they must be licensed physical therapists with a minimum of one year of full-time practice, as well as effective role modeling skills which is defined on a program to program basis. The director of clinical education must have at least three years of clinical practice with two being a clinical instructor and two involving teaching or, and or curriculum experience in a physical therapy program. This clinical education often provided outside of the classroom works in conjunction with the academic education and academic faculty made of the core and associated faculty. So here we see that the academic faculty is defined as faculty members who participate in the delivery of the didactic portion of the curriculum, which is what we learn in the classroom and in the laboratory hours. Core faculty have the responsibility to maintain established regulations, as well as to develop and execute the curriculum in place. Whereas associated faculty have teaching responsibilities, but are not core or clinical education faculty, meaning that they might have other responsibilities in the program, but maintain an expertise in their course. So I know this has been a lot of information and new for many coming from the clinical side of physical therapy. I wanna wrap up with a sneak peek more related to what the following modules will contain and discuss, which is deciding when the best time is to potentially pursue a return to academia and or a terminal academic degree. The pursuit of an advanced educational degree is not one size fits all. I think we all know in the physical therapy profession that it depends, a lot of things depend. So this is a good time to reflect on life, family responsibilities, other responsibilities, work, et cetera, as well as finances and determining the timing of your pursuit. Additionally, monitoring the field for vacancies and or retirement can encourage one to push the timeline or slow it down. So stay tuned for more discussion and later modules surrounding this difficult life decision. So that wraps up our content for module one, some foundational work regarding academia and CAPD, which plays a huge role in it all. Stay tuned for the second and third modules with more discussions surrounding preparation for a career in academia and first steps for future faculty. Provided here are some links to contact ACAPT or follow social media con to connect, as well as some references here so you can look into some more information on your own if you're interested. Thanks for joining us again today and be on the lookout for the second module regarding preparing for a career in academia.